Hey, good morning. Welcome to Take 5. It's time for our daily morning devotional. Uh, let's jump right in. We're recapping the sermon that I preached Sunday morning entitled Comfortable Chains. And we're talking about Israel there in Exodus chapter 8 where God sent the plagues on Egypt to convince Pharaoh to free the, the Hebrew people from their bondage, from their slavery, from their affliction. And we're talking about those few verses there in chapter 8 where it appears that God made the Hebrew people endure the first three plagues that he sent on Egypt. And we're discussing why that is, why God did that. And we've been talking about Israel and their comfort and how I believe that they had become comfortable in their bondage, comfortable in their chains. And I hope you understand by now that this is not just uh, another historical account of Israel. This is not just a biblical story, but this is a representation. This story is a representation of our being saved from our sin. Egypt is, in this story, repre uh, represents the sinful nature, the sin in our lives that held us captive, that, held, held, that has held us bondage since birth. Egypt represents that sinful nature that Jesus came to save us from. And Moses represents Christ himself. Christ being our kinsman redeemer as Moses was a kinsman redeemer to the Israelite people. God at the burning bush sent Moses back into Egypt, back into the world to redeem his people from their affliction, from their slavery. Just as he sent Christ back into the world to redeem his people, us, from our bondage, from our chains, from our slavery. So this is not just a, another biblical story, but this is a, a representation, a metaphorical account of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And the reason we're talking about all of this this week is because I believe that there are many of us that are watching today that are just like Israel. We're comfortable in our chains, in our sin. Jesus came and died 2,000 years ago and rose from the dead to free us from the bondage, to redeem us from our sin. But just like Israel, there's a part of us that's comfortable in our sin. It doesn't mean we're not saved. I believe that most of us probably watching this are saved. We're going to go to heaven when we die. God has, uh, through His Son Jesus, through our faith in Him, God has forgiven us of our sins and we will have eternal life with Him one day. But in the meantime, while we live on this earth to get there, there are many of us that are comfortable in our chains. We're comfortable in the sin that Jesus died to free us from so many years ago, just like Israel. And what I want you to understand, what I realize is, is that it's not easy to fight your way to freedom from sin. Israel, if they would have chosen to fight Egypt for their freedom, it would have cost them something. They would have had to make war uh, to, uh, weapons and would have had to prepare themselves. And the men would have had to, to, to strengthen themselves and get ready, and they would have had to fight Pharaoh and the Egyptians, and it probably would have cost them many, many lives. It would have cost them a lot. It would have been tough, but that's the price of freedom. And there are so many of us today that are watching this, and we have been saved for a long time, but we have continued to stay bound in our chains of slavery. And really, the only reason we're still bound in our sin is because it's, it's easier to stay in our chains. It's easier to stay in our sin than it is to fight for our freedom. It's easier to stay in our sin than it is to give the effort necessary to fight and work our way to be free. And the truth is, we, both, uh, both situations are difficult. They're hard. It's, it's hard to be enslaved. It's hard to be bound by something that you don't want to be bound by. It's hard to be controlled by something that you want for so long you have wanted to be free from. It's hard to live that way. And it's hard to work your way to freedom. It's work. It takes daily effort and work and fighting to be free and to stay free in your life. And that's where I realized we're just like Israel. You and I have to choose our chains. We have to choose our chains. We have to choose the hard that we want in life. 
God never promised that we would be comfortable every day of our life, but He did promise that we could be free through His Son, Jesus. That it's going to be hard to do the work that's necessary to be free, but you've got to choose which hard you want in life. You have to choose your chains. Romans chapter 6, verse 16 through 18, this is maybe my favorite chapter of the entire Bible. The Apostle Paul writes and he says, Don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Then he says, Thank God, once you were all slaves of sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have given you. Now you are free from your slavery to sin, and you have become slaves to righteous living. He said there in verse 16 that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey. So I ask you today, what are you choosing to obey? Do you consistently choose to obey your sinful nature because it's just easier to give in to temptation? Or are you actively working and pursuing and fighting to choose to to live righteously and to live for God, to choose to fight for freedom. Paul said that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey. And I don't know about you, but I would rather be a slave to Jesus than a slave to sin. You see, I realize that living for Jesus and living free from the bondage of sin is hard. It's work. Jesus told his disciples one time that if you want to be my disciple, you have to pick up your, you have to lay down your life, pick up your cross and follow me. And that's difficult. That's hard because the cross is a dying place. It's, it, Jesus is essentially telling them, you've got to be willing to sacrifice everything, even your life, to follow me. It's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. But that's what it costs to be my disciple. And it's there that I realize that either we will stay bound in our chains or we will bear our cross. It's our choice to choose, but... I've also realized that the hardships of freedom are far better than the provision of slavery. Slavery and our bondage to sin might be comfortable for a season, but the work and the hardships and the, the, the challenges and the determination and the work ethic and the effort it takes to be free far outweighs the provision of slavery. You and I have to choose our chains. Who will you be enslaved to today? Will it be sin or will it be Christ? It's your choice. Hey, I hope you have a great day today. I'll see you again right here tomorrow on Take 5.